right now at 10. The disturbing abuse little Mariah Woods may have suffered at the hands of her mother's boyfriend. A freeway ride into an inferno, out of control wildfires in Los Angeles, and a cop gets handsy with the wrong person. How she fought back, ending his career. But first, a weather alert. We are tracking the chance for snow. Here's Chief Meteorologist John Ziegler with who's getting what, where, and when. <laughs> oh, John. yeah, guys, we got a whole mixed bag of everything going on. We always put your neighborhood first, and it's raining right now. We're talking about rain, at least for tonight. We're going to start in Salisbury tonight up to Oakland Park, down at Granite Quarry. Still some decent rain on I-85, so it's going to be some slow movement there as it's almost redeveloping along I-85. So we're going to go down to China Grove, Kannapolis, still raining down there. Uh, Rockwell picking up some decent rain showers on your way over towards Huntersville and you actually see some dark greens from Mount Holly up to Mountain Island University and Huntersville area on north north side of Charlotte. There's some decent rain right now if you're thinking about getting out there. Also a little bit of rain out in Rockingham, Chesterfield, Patrick and up towards Wadesboro there's some light showers. Now it's nothing like we saw about a Two or three hours ago, we're starting to lighten things up, but there's still some showers. And the showers are slowly inching to the east, but I think we're just going to hang on to these light showers through tomorrow. Not, not a rainy day tomorrow, but just some sprinkles. Then Friday is where we start talking about the snow word. Who's going to get the snow? Well, tonight, again, the HER, the high-res model, brings it out at around 1 o'clock in the morning. But tomorrow, if you live in Lancaster, Chesterfield, Wadesboro, we might see some showers through your morning commute. And this is where we're going to see a lot of rain, actually, over the next three days. Our southeast zones picking up more rain. But it is a cold rain. Look at the temperature change. 13 degrees colder right now than yesterday. How about 20s? 22 degrees colder in Lancaster, 22 in Chesterfield. No surprise that when you cool it down like this, you have a chance for snow. So tonight we're going to be in the low 40s, probably dropping into the middle 30s for lows, but it's actually going to be Thursday night into Saturday, which we're going to break down into detail in my next forecast. But you see this rain-snow mix, all snow in the mountains, and then we're going to be more of a rain changing to snow here in the Charlotte, or at least Mecklenburg. So who's going to have the best chance to accumulate this snow? We're going to break it all down in that full forecast. Sounds good, John. This Sunday marks the start of winter preparedness week here in North Carolina, but the chance for snow this weekend has us getting ready now. This is video of the snowfall in Charlotte back in March, and here are ways for you to get ready. Know the difference between winter storm warnings, watches, and advisories. Neighborhood storm watch meteorologists, they can help you with that, and make sure you fully have your home stocked, all the essentials like bread, milk, and everything else, and in your car. Grab a jacket and some layers and dress for the weather. Well, the forecast can change at any minute, so when you wake up, be sure to tune in to Good Day Charlotte. Meteorologist Nick Kozer will have the latest. New information tonight. An autopsy confirms remains found in a Pender County Creek are those of three-year-old Mariah Woods. And we are also learning new details in this case. And I can tell you, as a parent, you do everything you can to protect your children, so I am warning you, these details are chilling. According to the Jacksonville Daily News, CPS paperwork reveals one of her brothers saw her mother's boyfriend, Earl Kimry, sexually abusing the little girl. Kimry is also accused of physically abusing Mariah's brothers and that their mother, Christy, knew about all of this. Kimry is charged with concealing her death. Well, stunning video from California tonight. It looks like the literal highway to hell, but this is the famous 405 in Los Angeles. A terrifying view for wildfires there, consuming everything in their path. Fox News' Adam Housley has more from the front lines. All right, we're going to try to get that video a little bit later for you. Meantime, a Chester police officer has been fired after he was charged with groping a sheriff's deputy, his wife, at a restaurant. Fox 46's Janine Donaldson spoke to the police chief about what happened. Officer James Franklin Johnson was charged with third-degree assault and battery and fired from the Chester Police Department. There was an investigation. Um, there were witnesses there. Um, like I said before, the facts and the findings were verified and confirmed, and that helped us make the decision that we made. Saturday night, Johnson, who was off duty, sat down beside a Union County, South Carolina Sheriff's deputy's wife at El Poblano in the city of Union. The victim, who was having dinner with her daughter and daughter-in-law, told police Johnson was highly intoxicated and began rubbing her leg and the inside of her thigh. Given the climate of 
you know, um, current day and things of this nature happening, um, there is a standard for a civilian. Outside that standard, we do have a standard in law enforcement, which is a higher standard. Police say the victim used a butter knife to stab Johnson's hand away. He then left and returned to an outside karaoke area. Chester Police Chief Eric Williams, just two days into the job, says his decision was based on a history of incidents with Johnson. They were in correlation to what we're dealing with now. Um, not, the same, not to say they were the same, but they were um, contributing circumstances that pretty much made my decision to be pretty concrete. A Union County Sheriff's deputy says Johnson was fired a year ago to the day for personnel issues related to policy violations. In Chester, I'm Janine Donaldson for Fox 46 Charlotte. New on Fox tonight, ABC News reporter Brian Ross is now banned from covering stories on President Trump. This comes after an erroneous report on Michael Flynn. Ross incorrectly reported that Flynn was prepared to testify that President Trump ordered him to make contact with the Russians during the campaign. ABC later issued a correction saying the order came after President Trump had won the election. Democratic Senator Al Franken hasn't decided if he will resign or not. Franken lost support today when a seventh woman came forward accusing him of inappropriate sexual behavior. Franken denies the allegations, but Democrat Senate leader Chuck Schumer and other colleagues are calling for him to step aside. Hall of Fame quarterback Warren Moon is being sued for sexual harassment. The lawsuit filed in California by a woman who worked for a sports marketing firm led by Moon. She claims he made her sleep in the same bed during overnight work trips, waking up with Moon's hand between her legs. She also claims that Moon slipped a drug into her drink on a trip to Mexico and pulled off her bathing suit. Moon has not responded to the allegations at this time. Only on Fox, a mother tells us her 12-year-old son was assaulted inside a Walmart by an older man. Fox 46 began looking into the case after receiving an email from a viewer asking us to look into a viral Facebook post that that mom had posted. Now, the email says in part, if this man is trying to pick up children, then why aren't the police doing something? Parentheses, maybe they are. It seems he's known to a lot of people. Tonight, Amber Roberts speaks with that concerned parent and the man who's accused. Think about it if it were your child. How would you feel? Rishonda Reed tells Fox 46 Charlotte she plans to be at every court date for the suspect involved in the reported assault of her 12-year-old son. Warrants state that at the Wadesboro Walmart, a 65-year-old man is accused of grabbing a 12-year-old by the arm without his permission. So just keep your child close. Keep an eye on your kids. After the suspect was charged, she then went to Facebook to share the information, and people started commenting, and the feedback was split. One Facebook user said, I know him personally, and he loves kids and talks to them about Jesus, so I know it wasn't meant in harm's way. Another Facebook user said in part, hope the experience didn't scare your baby. Um, it took him a few days for him to sleep in the room by himself again. The suspect's name is Jerry Martin, so we went to the address listed on the warrant to ask him his side of the story. No answer, but we did get him over the phone. He says this was a misunderstanding. Uh, I just hope that uh, the whole world will see the truth because the good Lord knows the truth and I ain't gonna lie it ain't worth lying about I'd rather help people than to try to hurt people that day at the Walmart he says he was just trying to talk with the child because he looks down Martin says he runs a ministry in both North and South Carolina that focuses on religious outreach I noticed he was very depressed I thought I'd just take my forefinger and touch him on the skirt of his shoulder and I said, hey, buddy, you want to play a high five game? Just to see if that would get him to alert and, and speak to me. But he took off running. The concerned mother says the store's security cameras and a Walmart employee back the assault story up. They have a court date next month. It don't seem harmless because you just don't touch nobody child that you don't know. I mean, there's no way of explaining it. You just don't do it. In Wadesboro, I'm Amber Roberts, Fox 46 Charlotte. Krispy Kreme is opening new corporate offices in Charlotte. Its global headquarters will remain in Winston-Salem. However, 90 positions are now being eliminated. The new corporate offices in Charlotte will open next year, but they haven't announced how many new jobs will be created in Charlotte. The big hot light coming to Charlotte. That is good news. And Fox 46 getting results for a tree dangling precariously and worrying neighbors in Plaza Midwood. A day after our story aired, the city came out and took the tree down. Neighbors were worried that the tree would come crashing down on the sidewalk 
at any moment. City leaders tell Fox 46 it is usually up to the homeowner to take care of the tree, but they decided to take action right away. And Fox 46 Charlotte wants to help you get results. Share your story idea with us by sending an email to news tips at fox46charlotte.com or you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Mecklenburg County sends a strong message to hackers holding county servers hostage why they won't pay the ransom next. Changing the way you carry a gun bill moving through Washington may change the way people carry their guns. Josh? Well, the Hornets with a big game tonight against the defending champion Golden State Warriors. But the big story, the absence of their head coach, Steve Clifford, due to health reasons. Find out what the players are saying about their coach, plus highlights from the game, all coming out later this hour in sports. Hi, right, thanks, Josh. I'm Brian Blakely. And I'm Diana Alvear. You're watching Fox 46 Charlotte News at 10, covering local news in Gastonia, Mint Hill, and the entire Charlotte area. This is a multi-day weather event. And continuing to follow these California wildfires, this is a live look here at Southern California where they're clearly continuing to burn out of control. Such a heartbreaking scene. Fox News' Adam Housley has more tonight from the front lines. This is a multi-day weather event projected to last until Friday. This has only just begun. The beginning of December brought a flurry of wildfires across Southern California with wind gusts approaching hurricane force and conditions tender dry. It's that combination of those gusty Santa Ana winds and the very low relative humidity led to explosive fire growth. The largest and most destructive, the Thomas Fire, about 60 miles northwest of Los Angeles in Ventura County. The flames scorched more than 100 square miles and drove tens of thousands from their homes. And I just wanted to get out of the house, so we just left basically with just the clothes on our back. I've been here all my life, and to see this happen right now, it's, it's crazy. NASA images show the smoke visible from space. The fuel for these fires, a year in the making after last winter's precipitation, allowed the vegetation to grow. But with no rain in three months, the dry conditions, along with the Santa Ana winds, are now fueling the fires. It doesn't take a lot under these conditions to start a fire. When you put wind behind it, embers can travel miles downwind which creates another fire. And about 60 miles east of Ventura in Silmar, people and animals also fleeing the Creek Fire, the blaze charring more than 10,000 acres. 
And 20 miles to the south of Silmar, a brush fire created a scary morning commute down the notoriously busy 405 freeway in Los Angeles, prompting a shutdown and burning multi-million dollar homes in the wealthy Bel Air neighborhood. The flames coming dangerously close to the famed Getty Center Museum. Los Angeles' mayor warning residents to be prepared to go. Be safe, get ready, load up your cars. While the winds are calm now, they are expected to come back tonight with a vengeance, worrying firefighters who've made some headway that new fires could be stoked or even places like this that burned down might be reignited, thus threatening homes nearby and hillsides that survived the recent firestorm. In Ventura, California, Adam Housley, Fox News. Back here at home, Mecklenburg County will not pay the $23,000 ransom to overseas hackers. Cyber criminals believed to be from Iran or Ukraine took 48 out of the county's 500 servers hostage, infecting them with a new strain of ransomware called LockCrypt. County manager says she is confident the backup data is secure and the county has the resources to fix the problem without paying the ransom. In the meantime, services like the sheriff's office is going to going back to using pen and paper to book and release people from jail. Everyone has been released from yesterday, uh, went through the same process, all the checks. It's just a manual process, takes a little bit longer. And right now we only have uh, seven folks that are in process, in arrest, arrest process, and, and we have 10 that are in the queue as far as going through the release process. Fox 46 asked to see that phishing email that opened the door for hackers to get in, but the county says they are not releasing that today. And their next move is to use backup data rebuild from scratch what has been taken over. A once missing eight-year-old girl will soon be reunited with her family. Ava Stack and her mo mom, Megan, were found safe hundreds of miles away from their South Charlotte home. Megan voluntarily drove to an EMS substation in Franklin County, Missouri, where she asked for help. Family began worrying and contacting police when no one had heard or seen Megan, heard from or seen Megan and Ava since Monday night. I'm just encouraged and reassured to know that they're, you know, they're both getting the help that they need now. You know, at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's, that's what matters is that they're fine and uh, we're going to have a family reunion in the not too distant future and, and uh, Megan's going to get the help that she needs. Police say Megan is going to have a medical evaluation and in a statement, the father says arrangements have been made to get his daughter back to Charlotte. <laughs> Now let's take a live look outside the Fox 46 Charlotte Tower cam. It was rainy earlier. I think that rain is continuing. Obviously a beautiful city tonight. Chief Meteorologist John Ziegler yeah. tracking this. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking about the rain tonight, which is much needed, but we're, the thing we're really concerned about right. is the snow coming. You're right. So the cold weather's here. If you stepped outside, yeah. I mean, it, it's Burr. cold. It's, it was smashed in the face. It really did. And the rain yesterday was kind of a nice, mild rain. Tonight, it's a cold, chilly rain. Mm -hmm. But you're right, this cold rain turns over to that snow chance. We're going to break that all down. Still raining in some spots. We always put your neighborhood first. Let's go into Coxville, Concord Mills area on the northeast side of Charlotte into Concord. So we're seeing some of this even in Central Cabarrus High School area. Some downpours going on. Main Street, Concord picking up that moderate rain right now. Harrisburg also seeing this in over to the University area. Mallard Creek Road, Poplar Tent Road over to I-85. That's where you're seeing some of the heavier rain bands. Matthews Mint Hill Indian Trail looks like there's some light rain continuing all the way to Pineville up towards the Steel Creek Lake Wiley area but Gastonia Clover starting to already taper off. There's not as heavy of rain to come like we've seen the past three or four hours. It should taper off as we head into the overnight hours. Chesterfield, Rockingham, Wadesboro still some light rain showers up there over to Salisbury and Albemarle but like I said it's moving. There's just a little bit of, there's a little bit of it's still there. So, I mean, tomorrow I'm not going to go 0%. I'm going to hold it at a 10, 20% chance all day. We might just see a couple of these showers. To be honest, kind of looks like today. It's going to be cold and it's going to be gloomy. So the high-res model is only going 15 hours out, but it does a good job. So we might see some showers in Chesterfield, Wadesboro at 2, 3 in the morning. But like I said, tomorrow the rain just keeps coming in from the same spot. So maybe some morning showers from Lancaster, Chesterfield, Wadesboro, and Monroe. Probably going to be dry or at least mainly dry here in Charlotte for that morning commute. It's all about that cold air, right? Look at some of these temperatures. 22 degrees colder right now in Chesterfield than yesterday. So, yeah, it's just a whew, it's just a free fall. And temperatures are going to continue this trend, but they're not cold enough yet. Right, 44 degrees is cold, but not cold enough for snow. So we got to get into the middle to upper 30s, which is what we're going to be trying to do, or at least I'm not trying to do it. The atmosphere is going to be trying to do that for Friday. Still 33 in Boone and Jefferson. So anything that happens in the mountains from here for the next week will be snow. It's not even going to be a question there. 
So what's going on? We just have a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf. As long as you have the moisture in the Gulf, we're going to have that threat for snow. But we need the cold air, and it's sitting back out towards Iowa. You actually see this little front here. Once this collides with our rain system, that'll happen Friday, that's where the changeover can happen. Let's not forget about tomorrow. Tomorrow, gloomy, yes, and I have a high of 49. So it's a jackets on type day. Kiddos, jackets in the morning, jackets when you go home from school. Now we can fast forward to Friday. I'm using the GFS model. I just think it's been doing the, the most consistent job. The other models have been all over the place. I like consistency. So let's go to Friday morning. You see the rain come back. Okay, but this is already in the afternoon. You see this blue? Morganton, Hickory, Statesville. If we can already turn the rain over to snow at one, we could see some accumulations up there. Let's go to the evening hours. Now you see a little bit more blue getting to Lincolnton, Gastonia. Will it change from rain to snow here in Charlotte? What do you know? We're about a 50-50 chance for that. I still think we have, we'll see some flakes, but it's going to be on the back end, end of this year. But it's done by 6 in the morning Saturday. So this is a Friday evening. I'd say 5 o'clock Friday to around 2 a.m. Saturday is where we have that chance for some of that snow. So again, I think it's all rain in Chesterfield and Rockingham, mainly rain in Rock Hill, Monroe, and Lancaster. But this area, like Charlotte, could still end with some snow. It's this area, the teal here. Rain, snow mix. It's going to start with rain, but could quickly turn to snow. Anything that happens in the mountains will be snow. Who has the best chance to accumulate snow, right? Okay, we talked about the snow. This map will tell you who's going to pick up accumulation. And I did it just the easiest way possible for me to understand it. And uh, I hope this is how you can understand it as well. Odds for one inch of snow. That doesn't mean half an inch. I think the chance for half an inch will be a little higher. But Charlotte still has a 10% chance for an inch. Lincolnton, Hickory, Lenore, Statesville, 40 or 50% chance to accumulate snow. Probably a 60 or 70% chance in Statesville for at least half an inch. So get ready for some at least grassy surfaces picking up that snow Friday. Very cold nonetheless, 49. We go 43, upper 30s in Statesville and Hickory and Morganton there. 44 Saturday, very cold on Sunday. Look at the low temperatures in the 20s. And then we have another front Tuesday, and it looks like one of the coldest days of the year will come on Wednesday. So cold is not going to end. Get the big jackets ready to go, and we're going to have more updates on Friday. And I'm actually going to go on Facebook Live uh, on my Facebook page at 11 o'clock so you can have in-depth details on everything you need to know. All right, John, thanks. Winter is here. Neighbors getting results, a man dedicating his time to write to the troops this holiday season, and how you can do your duty and be part of the mission.
Neighbors are getting results for our troops. What started as one man's mission to ship a few personalized letters to our servicemen and women has turned into more than 50,000. Matt Hunt, a former sergeant in the Army, collects cards and care packages to deliver to soldiers overseas. He has been doing this now for 10 years, starting the nonprofit Rose of Thanks back in 2007. Now, tomorrow, he'll be sending what he's collected over this year. Hunt says it is all about showing our troops love. You can read these cards and, you know, you, you just start, uh, start tearing up. I mean, it's, it, that's, the, that's the beauty of what, what this is all about. It's, it's about making a difference in somebody else's life. Absolutely. If you'd like to send a care package, card, or monetary donation to help with shipping, just visit our website, fox46charlotte.com. A link is posted on the fifth story on our main page. You can also find the story under the local news tab. That means so much to me because my brother served overseas in Iraq and in other places as well. And anything we sent him, it was just so important for his, you know, emotional state, and he felt so loved. Yeah, so especially during the, the holidays do. when they're separated during this time, that yeah. really go a long way. Love to see the smiles on their faces when that happens too. Help out if you can. Absolutely. Make sure to check your Airbnb. Why recent renters are questioning their privacy next. Then Fox 46 recognizes teachers getting results and how a passionate professor makes sure her students get excited about math.